I have been meaning to make this video for a while and just haven't gotten around to it, so I'm out doing some errands today. So you're gonna get this video kind of in the car style here. So I've been thinking about this recently, uh, the idea of the warrior scholar. And um, th this, I, this idea or this ideal or whatever, I've always long been fascinated with and, and certainly one of the things that I've tried to model this channel off of a little bit, which, you know, you've probably picked up on if you've been here for any length of time. But basically, I think that this idea of someone who is a scholar, um, meaning, and I use that term pretty liberally, right? I'm not using that term to mean like an actual like collegiate scholar or whatever that, that te the technical definition would mean. I mean someone who's learned, right? Someone who reads, someone who's knowledgeable, someone who has uh, some, some helpful, intelligent insight on a variety of, of different topics. Um, someone who is a competent uh, intellectual force. That, that, that's what I mean, right? Someone who has a thinking, working brain, who's not simply a brute uh, or some kind of stereotypical uh, high school jock character, right? But someone that, that has real intelligence and thought and input and works to cultivate that as a, as a skill and as an area of knowledge um, and, and pursues that, right? So intellectual pursuits, be it poetry or philosophy or theology or... I don't know, engineering or something, right? But there's some kind of like uh, intellectualized pursuit that isn't just simply brutish. Uh, combined with someone who's also able to get suited and booted and step on the field and put in hard work, right? And and I think be that combat or be that digging a ditch or, or be that, you know, whatever, whatever kind of putting your hand to the plow hard physical labor uh, is, is required. And I think those, those two things in combination is really what the, the, ideal, the ideal man should be. Um, and I think you see this history is littered with examples of these people, right? And we have, hold them in a very high regard. Uh, I think that the King David in the Bible is an excellent example of a, of a warrior scholar, right? The guy writes, like, I don't know how many of the Psalms, but it's a lot. I think it's over 100 of the 150 Psalms he's written. Um, so obviously very, uh, has, has extreme prowess on the field of uh, intellectual pursuit and poetry and, and this kind of thing. Um, you know, talks with God and all this sort of stuff. And also, um, you know, his, his battle qualifications are simply unrivaled, unchallenged. I mean, the guy killed a Nephilim and brag to tell about it, or live to tell about it, live to brag about it. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. Point being that um, no one is going to question whether or not David is competent on the field of battle, right? That, that's, he's a warrior king. That's one of the things he does. Uh, so I, I think that's an excellent example. C.S. Lewis is a, is a great example, right? I mean, the guy fought in the trenches of World War I. Uh, Roland Dahl, the guy who writes the children's books, also another good example, actually. He was a... Uh, Air Force, uh, he was in British, the British Air Force, but he was an ace, um, you know, so that's, that's a pretty big accomplishment, right? Um, so he put in his time doing the fighting thing and then wrote, went on to write all these very successful, very well done uh, children's books, right? Like James and the Giant Peach, which you probably read in school as a kid. Uh, and I just think that there are lots of, Ernst Junger, uh, German, fought in World War I, went on to write uh, multiple books about his experience in World War I. Uh, Storm and, I think this is one that I read, it's called The Storm and Steel, uh, or the, something like that. Uh, very good, very good, you should read that if you ever get a chance. I've done a review of it on this channel. But those are all the ones I can think of while I'm driving here running errands. Point being that there's just a lot of these examples of people that that combine the intellectual prowess with the physical prowess, right? And we need both. Um, you know, I think it was, I think it was Plato, the platonic ideal that uh, society should be ruled by philosopher kings, right? Because they're the, the highest uh, regard of people who know the most and, you know, can can think the best for society. And, and I think that there's something to that. I, I think there's something to that ideal of saying, you know, we want people who again, can put in the hard physical work. Socrates, Socrates is another good example. Um, 
Socrates, if you don't know who Socrates is, he's basically the founder of all Western philosophy. Uh, and he was a hoplite. He lived in Athens and was a hoplite warrior and provided his own gear and fought at the Battle of Marathon, which if you don't know what the Battle of Marathon is, it kind of defined Western history for the next couple thousand years because the Persians didn't crush the Greeks and crush all the traditions that we inherit from them. Point being, uh, lots of examples of these people, right? The Founding Fathers are another good example uh, where a lot of these guys, you know, own farms. Like George Washington, right? owns a farm. I think he owned a tobacco farm. And they're putting in hard work on their farms. And they're also just these intellectual towering giants that contribute to the building and forging of a nation, right? Again, no one's going to question George Washington's battle prowess uh, because, you know, he was the general for multiple years, uh, fought in wars before the Revolutionary War. So I think there's something to that gentleman. I think there's something to pursue that, and I think that you can come down on one or two sides of those, right? You can say, "Oh, you know, I'm just I'm just a blue collar guy, Dylan. I don't I don't do the intellectual thing. I don't feel smart. I don't feel confident there. You know, I learned a long time ago I'm not that smart or whatever." And you can just kind of check out on that, or I don't like reading. You know, it really isn't my thing or whatever. If you're not a reader, go ahead and become one. Um, you can thank me later. I, I just think that. You, you boys don't get to check out on me there. You you have to pursue that to lead your families well, to lead your communities well, right? To, to be a force to be reckoned with, to be dangerous, you have to be smart. And I think that there's, there's some skills there to cultivate, right? We're all born with inherent dispositions and capabilities, right? And some of you were born stronger than me and some of you were born smarter than me and that's just kind of the way it is. That being said, uh, I do think that doesn't mean the rest of us get to slack off and not pursue those things and not try to be as smart, well-read, knowledgeable as we can, right? And I think the other the other way you could fall off that, right, is just to be a, a bookish, intellectual dweeb and be like, well, you know, for every deadlift I do, that's a page I can't read. And I'm like, yeah, I don't have time for that either. You know, you have to be physically strong. You have to be willing to put in the hard work um, to, you know, plant your garden and build a bunch of garden beds and remodel your kitchen and whatever. Um, load your rifle and step onto the field of battle. Like, you have to be able to combine those things. And for the, the men that can be intellectually formidable and physically strong and able to put in the work and have the endurance to to do brave deeds, uh, that that's going to matter. Right? That's going to matter. So, this is my encouragement to you to take a look at your life, say, hey, am I am I neglecting one of these pursuits? You know, am I am I saying, ah, I don't, you know, I'm kind of shy away from that one. And if so, stop doing that, right? And and lean into that and say, okay, well, you know, I don't I don't ever read any books, so I guess I should. Dylan says I should read some books, so I don't know. Start with your Bible, that'll be good. Uh, and then then I've re reviewed a bunch of books on this channel, and. There are things that you can learn and know, and I want you boys to be strong because God knows we're going to need you, all right? That's all I got. Those are my thoughts on the warrior scholar archetype, why it's the best one, why we should be that one, and I hope that you are pursuing that as best you are able. Do brave deeds and endure.